subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Let me begin first of all by saying how happy I am to welcome you to what is the first episode of Kattak Letter in 2021. As you know, we took a somewhat long weekend off this time for Kattak Letter as well as national interest. Now, we are recording this indoors because we have been pushed indoors by the beautiful winter rains outside. Now, while winter rains outside are beautiful, also it is raining vaccines. So, in fact, when I say with great enthusiasm that I am welcoming you to the first episode of Kartha Clutter in 2021, you might see some kind of a, uh, some kind of triumphalism uh, in the sense of saying that we are leaving 2020 behind when we had no weapon to fight coronavirus pandemic. Then all we could do was hide in our trenches, bunkers, which basically meant keeping our masks on working from home as much po as possible, staying indoors, staying only with our own at home, not touching physically another human being. In fact, most of us haven't touched another human being besides the few that we might live with. So now it looks like that there is light at the end of the tunnel and we have finally got not just one weapon or one bullet, but a bunch of bullets or in fact a multi-barreled machine gun to start the fight or to, to join the fight in earnest against the COVID pandemic. Now India, government of India also cleared two vaccines just this last Sunday. Now there has been both excitement and controversy. There are both compliments and complaints. Compliments to scientists for having done it so fast. Compliments to Indian vaccine manufacturers, which make India the vaccine factory of the world. But complaints also that the Modi government has rushed this through, particularly the second clearance for what is called as Bharat Biotech vaccine or co-vaccine. That since that is fully made at home or a Swadeshi vaccine, the government was in a rush to clear that, to get the brownie points. And that's why the government was not even willing to wait for any data from phase 3 results of the trials with that vaccine. Now that is valid. It is true that phase 3 trials are still going on. Some preliminary data has been submitted to the government and the regulators. That data is encouraging. But the fact is that full enrollment for phase 3 for that vaccine has not yet taken place. It will take place uh, in a few days. It will finish in a few days. And my view, which I, I have expressed on Twitter, would have been that a few more weeks patients would not have hurt. It would have actually helped. Once again, I do think that Bharat Biotech is a world-class company. Its founder, Krishna Ella, his children who work with him, they are top-class researchers. They are not just entrepreneurs. They are researchers. And most of us, most of us, our children, our families have taken, in the course of time, more than one vaccine from these two Indian manufacturers, that is Bharat Biotech, Serum Institute, I suppose also from Indian immunologicals, Cadilla, Indian vaccine manufacturers are the most respected in the world. Now, having said that, uh, and having also underlined the fact that this clearance seems to be, to be hurried, let me also point out to you the fine print which is very important that there is a distinction between the two clearances. The clearance for Serum Institute is experimental use authorization which means you can start injecting it right away of course with follow ups and all that. But the other one Bharat Biotech the government still says or the regulators still say that you can inject it but only in an emergency that means if you are short of supply and there is a big spike in numbers just as we are seeing in Britain right now. See that graphic on the screen. See how Britain has gone up like this. And Britain is a country which has now vaccinated a lot of people. Uh, it's only happened lately. So that immunity will take a couple of weeks setting in. But just see how that graph has gone up vertically. That's because these new strains have come in. And God forbid if new strains come in and if there is a big conflagration and one manufacturer's stores may not be enough to vaccinate enough people. So you might start using the other ones, but following these up like it was a clinical trial, not 
perfect by no means perfect if you ask me it's the right thing to do i will say no it is not the right thing to do if you ask me at the same time do you not trust in this vaccine i would say that i will intrinsically trust in the vaccine but remember that old line that ronald reagan spoke with mikhail gorbachev gorbachev trust but verify verification in science is trial result so there is phase 1 trial phase 2 trial phase 3 trial we've explained this many times to you phase 3 is when you see efficacy at a large enough level that trial is going on i think that data will be available or some more data will be available in a couple of weeks so maybe government was rushed into saying yes to a domestically made fully indian made vaccine as well but having said that that vaccine has logic to it it's not an illogical vaccine and we'll talk about the science of the vaccines as well but you know some of the basics you know the basics that uh, serum institutes vaccine was originally developed by the group under professor adrian hill at oxford university's jenner institute that is named after jenner the scientist who first discovered the vaccination for smallpox and saved tens of millions of lives across the world including in india now they've been working on this vaccine uh, for some time that's an adeno chimpanzee adeno virus based vaccine what happens there is that this is an adeno virus a kind of virus that produces that causes common cold equivalent in chimpanzee so you take this virus out you replicate these in the lab you build larger numbers and then you impregnate them or you write on them the genetic code of the corona virus spike protein so this adeno virus weakened adeno virus goes into our bodies it cannot infect us uh, our bodies will not be infected by this but because this is carrying the message it's carrying on its back the spike protein of corona virus which again can't do us any harm because that is just the protein just the spike without the virus and our body thinks that look this is an enemy i have to prepare to fight it so your body begins to produce antibodies and that is how it works so oxford university began working on it they have a, they have a history of having done this they had worked on this model or on this platform for a malaria vaccine to begin with that did not work then they used the same platform of chimpanzee adenovirus to develop a vaccine for ebola now ebola did not spread so much so vaccine did not find such a big commercial viability but the fact that this adenovirus or the use of this adenovirus was safe for human beings was then established over so many years of experimentation or trials for malarial and ebola vaccines having done so uh, this vaccine has gone through many trials across the world in britain but also in many other countries those results have been published the last paper to be published was in lancet on 8th of december and that data is peer reviewed uh, it's seen globally it's available to all of us this shows that with two vac- uh, two shots this vaccine gives you about 70% protection now there was one fluke there where they found that in some cases they got 90% protection but that was a group that got by mistake half a dose the first time and full dose the second time but that could be anything that could be a coincidence that could be because those uh, patients or those those candidates were much younger we don't know but that is no longer being taken seriously it's a two dose vaccine and the makers of the vaccine suggest a 6 week gap between the two vaccines similarly the makers of the other vaccine that is bharat biotech which is covaxin they have not yet uh, they have not yet laid out a precise time for the second dose but generally it's believed that that one the second dose will have to be earlier it will have to be within 14 days now how safe are these how much will these cost you've seen those there isn't much clutter uh, about that cost will be about 2000 250 to 450 rupees of either uh, to the government your drug controller general of india which is the final clearing authority for all drugs and vaccines in india has said both vaccines are 
safe. That's a bit of an overstatement and not just 10%. Nothing is 100% safe. Uh, that is a fact of life. But these are very safe because phase 1 and 2 trials for both have demonstrated safety. Uh, Serum Institute has gone through phase 3 trials in many countries and those are peer-reviewed trials with results. It's now also going through trials in India. So it is still an emergency use authorization. So as more data comes in, uh, more uh, regulation will kick in uh, in the course of time. Now it is true that Bharat Biotech does not have efficacy data yet or peer-reviewed or at least efficacy data in public yet. They have shared some with the government. So eminent scientists, someone like say Dr. Gagandeep Kang uh, at Velour, she has said that look, there is absolutely no efficacy data. I have not seen such a thing before. I thought I knew something about vaccine clearances or vaccine trials. Now this is correct and that raises questions but we will, as we come to those questions, we will also come to what this vaccine is all about. Now along with this, there has been a third vaccine also which I find very exciting. That is also fully a Swadeshi vaccine. And that is uh, Ahmedabad firm, Gujarat firm, Zydus Cadillas vaccine, which is a DNA vaccine. Now, we'll talk about that. That's a very exciting and different and distinctive approach and very innovative approach to vaccinations. Again, Zydus Cadilla is a firm which has built a big reputation for making vaccines. In 2010, they had an H1N1, that is a swine flu vaccine, uh, cleared and patented. Uh, it's called Vaxiflu, Vaxiflu S by their division called Vaxicare. It's an egg-based inactivated virus vaccine. So a bit like the vaccine that we'll talk about in a bit, that's the Bharat Biotech, Biotech vaccine. Take a virus, inactivate it, put an adjuvant which makes it uh, more not active, much bit, but which makes it stay longer in your body so your body can respond to it. And then your body produces antibodies against it so your body can fight the disease. So they had produced those. They are now working for a vaccine called Zycov Zy D. So we will talk about that. But before we talk about that, let me tell you the essential difference between say the Serum Institute vaccine or Serum Institute which is Originally, Oxford University vaccine for which AstraZeneca, the British pharma company, took the rights. But the science has come from Oxford University. That, as we told you, uses chimpanzee adenovirus cells, which are then encoded with SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoproteins. So basically, you take that virus, you paint it or you encode it. It's all genetic engineering. Uh, with uh, COVID-19 spike protein and that's it, it comes into our bodies. Our body only sees the spike protein and begins to make antibodies against the spike protein. The adenovirus means no harm to us. It can do no harm to us. On the other hand, if you see what Bharat Biotech is doing, that is among the older ways of producing a vaccine. So older means sasta, Sulja hua or tikau. I am not saying sasta, sundar or tikau. The sundar ki definition mein, you might end up with the messenger RNA and all that because those are sexy and new. But this is tried and tested, which means take a dead bug, insert it inside a human body with an adjuvant. Usually it's alum, fit curry, so that it stays in your body and gives your body the time to make antibodies against it. So basically, it is a kind of a false alarm in your body, but your body gets prepared for an emergency as if it was a real alarm. So this uses a dead virus. So in this case, ICMR has given a bunch of this virus to ICMR and National Institute of Virology which is in Pune, which is a lab under ICMR. They have given a bunch of this virus to Bharat Biotech with which they have done kind of an agreement, joint venture, whatever, I don't know the technicalities. So they are now partners and they are doing it. Now this is an old time tested method. What happens is this goes into your body, your body responds. We have used many such vaccines. Chances are in fact that most of us, most of us who are 
watching this most of you are watching this have taken some vaccine like that so our, a lot of our hepatitis b vaccines rabies vaccines polio vaccines etc are made like that so no big deal also the old typhoid vaccine typhoid is not caused by a virus by by a bacteria that was also constructed as something like that so my generation has had that typhoid vaccine as well you want to see who else is doing it so there are two more vaccines in fact one of which has now been approved two more chinese vaccines one of which has now been approved by two arab countries uae and bahrain that is the sinopharm vaccine the sinopharm vaccine and the other chinese vaccine sinovac both also use the same method so what the chinese sinopharm vaccine and also the bharat biotech vaccine what they do is they take this virus put it in what is called as a vero cell medium now vero cell is like you use uh, i'm explaining it crudely like monkey kidney cells put them in a medium put the viruses make the viruses multiply then kill the virus then add add, add them with an adjuvant alum mostly which keeps it in your body and then it goes into your body the action that then takes place is that as it goes into your body your body has cells which are called antigen presenting cells apcs right? we, we are giving you a fairly crude diagram of what happens to explain so this cell comes and this engulfs this virus dead virus that comes in from outside as this wet, dead virus goes into inside your antigen presenting cell your antigen presenting cell then starts sending out messages or proteins from this virus outside that cell so this protein which means antigen then goes out because the virus is carrying antigen this antigen then goes out and activates your t cells b cells and also which then generate antibodies so this antigen presenting cell swallows the dead virus dead virus outside of the dead virus are proteins spike proteins which are then sent out of that cell that antigen presenting cell outside to other cells so effectively it is presenting that antigen to body's immune cells so body's immune cells then produce antibodies that is t cells and others but the important thing with this route of vaccine production is that this route produces immunogenicity not just from your cells which is called cellular immunogenicity but it also produces humoral immunogenicity what is humoral it's nothing to do with humor or being humorous humoral is our body has fluids which are extracellular fluids which are not inside our cells so our body has many fluids so those fluids also because antibodies keep floating in those fluids also those fluids also produce antibodies so this becomes a very robust reaction that is the logic now that's why i say that bharat biotech vaccine is also logical it's a tried and tested sasta suljha hua tikau sustainable model hai ye but there is only one problem that we are so early in the vaccine making cycle that neither bhai bharat biotech nor the chinese vaccines as yet have phase 3 trial data for peer reviews but both countries have cleared it in case of the chinese vaccine uae and bahrain have also cleared it so once again it isn't a cause for any great outrage or worry it is just that what is the big hurry in clearing it and not waiting for two more weeks because that would have created a much greater greater sense of reassurance and if i know the company bharat biotech and its uh, uh, founders and people who run it i think they would have also been might have been more comfortable if they had a couple more weeks now having described these two i have to come to the third one and third one is the zydus cadella vaccine which is a completely different route because so far in the world we've had messenger rna vaccines approved those were the first that is moderna and pfizer then we had an adenovirus approved that is british approval for oxford university astrazeneca then we have this partial or qualified approval for whole virus vaccines whole uh, attenuated or dead virus vaccines that is for sinopharm the chinese company and bharat biotech the indian company but the other route to a vaccine is a dna route 
which means it is the nucleic acid route. What is DNA and what is RNA? One is ribonucleic acid, one is deoxyribonucleic acid. So, nucleic acid route means you put into our bodies some DNA of the virus or which carries the genetic code of coronavirus. When that happens, our body will convert it, will transcribe it into RNA. And when that happens, our body will transcribe the RNA, say, of the spike protein, then our body again starts producing antibodies. So, in one case, mRNA, you just sent a message directly on, R MR on RNA from outside, which went into our cells, sent a message from our cells to our ribosomes to start making spike proteins, uh, so that then the body will make antibodies. Similarly, in this case, you smuggle DNA into human bodies. And how does this vaccine smuggle DNA into our bodies? This vaccine uses the vehicle of what is called as plasmid. So, what is plasmid? Let me try and explain to you in as simple a form as possible without uh, sounding like an idiot or without, uh, without oversimplifying it. So, a plasmid is not a living body. Plasmid is like... A bit like this, it's small extra chromosomal DNA molecule. So, it does not have any chromosome, does not come from our chromosome or does not carry any chromosomal DNA. But it's a molecule like this, like two circles like this, which can't do very much. It's like, like an empty wagon, like you have an empty wagon and you have an engine. So, in an empty wagon, you can put anything you want. So, in this empty wagon, what the scientists put is, they put the genetic code of the viral DNA. So, this plasmid and plasmids are usually made from bacteria. I am sharing a couple of articles from you, one describing what plasmids are and one from US National Institute of Health on how these plasmid DNA vaccines work. In fact, we are also borrowing uh, a graphic from them on how these plasmid vaccines, plasmid DNA vaccines work. Uh, so, thank you very much, National Institute of Health. It's a public resource, so we are doing it, but it helps us understand. So, as this goes into our body, uh, this plasmid is physically separated from a chromosome DNA and then it can replicate independently. And this is put the way Zydus Cadilla has developed this vaccine, this is injected transdermally. So, it is injected under our skins. Now, what scientists have is, once they take out a plasmid, then they have the tools to clone it, to transfer stuff to it, to manipulate it, to put other DNA fragments to it. So, it becomes a vector. And when they put all this other stuff to it, it's then called recombinant. That's why you call it a recombinant DNA vaccine. So, cutting edge technology, cutting edge science, that is what Zydus Cadilla is doing. Be very proud. It's not yet done. They've just got the permission to start their phase 3 trials. Their phase 1 trials began on 15th of July. That was for safety. Uh, they passed the safety test. Second phase started on 6th of August. That again passed successfully. And now they are on to their third stage. So, if that happens, then there will be one more Indian manufacturer. In that case, again, that will be purely a Swadeshi vaccine. So, once again, celebrate the fact that India has such deep strength not just in vaccine manufacture, vaccine manufacture is a big deal, but also in vaccine research and design. So, that is something to be good about. Now, politicians getting overexcited, politicians wanting headlines, that's also a part of life. And while we may regret that we don't have any Dr. Anthony Fauci here, who can stand up to a Donald Trump, it's true. Uh, but at the same time, I would say, be patient and I think government has also stepped back a little bit after clearing the two. They put in so many qualifications to the use of Bharat Biotech vaccine right now uh, on public. I think the more they say this is only for clinical trials, the more they distance themselves from this hasty clearance which is not fair to anybody, which is not fair to science, which is not fair to scientists, which is not fair to Bharat Biotech, which is once again I am saying for the third time today a first class 
company. So as you look at all this, thank the scientists. There are many scientists at ICMR, at National Institute of Virology, at CCMB in uh, Hyderabad, at CSIR, uh, who've contributed to this. But also remember to thank three of India's finest pharma and vaccine scientists and entrepreneurs. In fact, two are scientists come entrepreneurs. And these three are Adar Poonawala Serum Institute uh, of Pune, uh, which is making the Oxford vaccine. Then Krishna Ella, Dr. Krishna Ella, who is a researcher himself of Bharat Biotech, founder of Bharat Biotech. And Sharvil Patel, who is the founder of Zydus Cadilla. He is a scientist as well.